also going to kind of ask you to weigh in on an interesting story. You might get teed up for this. Uh, I've got it in the stack here, and you, you might have even read this story. It's about a, a mother and her daughter, teenage daughter. They had a confrontation, I think just kind of an argument or a quarrel with another mother and her daughter uh, in an adjacent block. They're walking home, the mother and teenage daughter, and these 10 youths, guys, males, surround them and start physically assaulting her daughter. So she, she has a gun that she has a license to carry. She goes a safe distance away. And then in order to scare off these guys that are actually physically assaulting her daughter, she fires the gun into the air. And the guys scatter. Her daughter is safe. The police come, and they arrest her. They arrest her for an unlawful discharge of a firearm. Want to know what you think about that? I mean, I'm 100% with the mom on this deal. But she's in legal trouble. She could go to jail over this thing. I mean, the way they treat uh, uh, firearm offenses these days, it could be brutal for her. So... You'll be thinking about that when we open up the phone lines. We'll take your comments on that. Now, shifting to something a little more sublime, as you know f- from listening the last several days, my reading has taken me into the, the book of the Song of Solomon. This is a, is, is a love poem. It's an extended and beautifully written piece of literature extolling the love between a husband and a wife, between a groom and his bride, between a bride and and her groom. And it's beautiful poetry, some of it very explicit. In fact, there's one section, honestly, today that I'm not even going to read because this is, a, this is American Family Radio. And it, it, it is so direct that some people in this listening audience might even find it offensive. But the, the point of this is that, that sexual love between a husband and wife is God's idea. It's, it, he created it. It's one of his greatest gifts to humanity. It's his idea. Uh, it's a great idea, it's a great gift, and he's very, very clear that it's a powerful gift. It can be misused. This power of sexual energy can be misused, and that's why it's important that it be reserved for marriage and then channeled into the marriage relationship. Now, the, the segment I'm going to read today begins with a, a little exchange where, where the, the bride has uh, gone to bed. She's gotten undressed, she's in bed, she's, her hair's down, and her, her groom comes and uh, wants to come into her chambers, and she doesn't want him to come in because she doesn't think she's presentable. So he kind of goes away, and then she realizes she made a mistake. She tracks him down in the middle of the night to try to find him because she wants to kiss and uh, to make up. And here is the, the way it begins. Here's the sound she hears. My beloved is knocking, open to me, my love, my dove, my perfect one. Uh, And he's been out walking in the night to come over and see her. Apparently, at this point in the marriage, they were uh, living in in separate quarters, which was not uncommon at that time. But he wants to come and visit her uh, in the evening. And she says, I had put off my garments. How could I put it on? I had bathed my feet. How could I soil them? So her husband even stuck his hand through the latch, uh, and But she took so much time to respond, she finally decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my robe on and I'm going to go to the door and I'm going to let him in. And by that time, he was gone. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. So she runs out to track him down. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am sick with love. And so her friends... The maids of honor, they say, what is your beloved more than another beloved? Oh, most beautiful among women. What is your beloved more than another beloved? Why are you sick with love? What do you see in this guy? That's basically their question. Here's what she says. My beloved is radiant and ruddy, distinguished among 10,000. His head is the finest gold. His locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside streams of water bathed in milk, sitting beside a full pool. His cheeks are like beds of spices, mounds of sweet-smelling herbs. His lips are lilies dripping liquid myrrh. His arms are rods of gold set with jewels. His body is polished ivory bedecked with sapphires. His legs are alabaster columns set on bases of gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, and he is altogether desirable 
This is my beloved and this my friend, O daughters of Jeru Jerusalem. So he says, that's what I see uh, in this guy. I am my beloved, she says, and my beloved is mine. And so they reconnect. She finds him. They reconnect and get back to where they wanted to be. You know, that whole business about this physical description of her husband. You know, we travel with our kids. We'd go through the airport and, uh, you know, they always have these fitness magazines out there on the racks uh, as you're going through the airport by the gift shops. And I would stop and I'd point to these guy, really buffed guy. I mean, he is just like ripped and he's on the cover of one of these fitness magazines. And I would say to my kids, look, it's amazing what they can do with Photoshop. They took, they took my body and put that guy's head on it. So anyway, that uh, Solomon bride actually had a guy that had that kind of physique. Well, let's go to prayer for ourselves, for our marriages, our own marriages and our families, and then in our land. Heavenly Father, we pray this day in the name of Jesus for every marriage in our families, our churches, and in this land. We pray especially for each wife that you will make her responsive to the initiative she receives from her husband. May she be eager to pursue reconciliation when a breach has occurred between them. I pray that her heart will always belong to him and long for his love. I pray that she will always remember him as he was when she fell in love with him. May she always remember the attraction of his face and the strength of his youth. I pray that he will always be to her radiant and strong, outstanding among 10,000 men. May his appearance always be to her as beautiful as the cedar forest of Lebanon, strong and regal. I pray that his mouth will be sweetness itself to her and that he will be altogether lovely to her as her lover and friend. May she belong wholly to him and he to her.